بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن والاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to another series of the special ten we are joined by Sheikh Arshad the head of Islamic studies here at Unity Bar Sheikh Arshad welcome thank you for joining us and thank you for putting together this yet yet again another series of the special ten um, this is a very unique and, and uh, different special 10. So what's the significance of this series of special 10, Sheikh Ashad? Wa well, alaikum uh, Brother Muhammad. Um, Jazakallah khair. Well, if you remember, um, not long ago we had Ramadan and we had the last 10 nights of Ramadan and we introduced the, uh, the initiative of the special 10. Uh, uh, by that we meant the last uh, 10 nights, special 10 nights of, of the month of Ramadan. And now we are in the uh, blessed month of, of Hajj and the first 10 days of the Hijjah in which uh, the acts of worship uh, are the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, these are the first 10 days of the Hijjah, the most blessed days in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Islamic calendar and uh, that's the um, occasion, the special 10 and inshallah we'll be introducing uh, various uh, different Islamic topics um, uh, covering in these special tens that will be of ben benefit to the viewer. Fantastic. So, Sheikh, you've joined us in the beginning of the year as the head of Islamic studies in your new post. Uh, what are some of the things or the initiatives that you've been busy with to oh, serve the community? Well, there, there are many uh, initiatives. Um, if you remember um, the last uh, weeks of uh, term uh, two, we had the initiative with, with the Exodus Foundation where we um, uh, gave uh, a large number of uh, sleeping bags and blankets uh, uh, to the um, less fortunate in the in the community here. Uh, the other initiatives um, uh, are the six, we're introducing the six Islamic targets um, in Unity Grammar. So anything that is to do with our deen, our religion, here at Unity Grammar will be revolving around these six targets, including the teaching and learning programs of Islamic studies, uh, including the Juma sermons, the uh, morning assemblies that we have. So, uh, yeah, fantastic. And so, what is the first of the six targets? Well, the first of the six targets is, is uh, the most important target, and that is the uh, uh, fundamentals of Islam, Islamic fundamentals, um, uh, which entails aqida, which is theology. Uh, our set of beliefs and the um, uh, Islamic jurisprudence um, and that is covered by the uh, five pillars of Islam and Aqidah obviously is covered by the six pillars of Iman or faith. And why is it so important for students at Unity Grammar? It gives them a sense of identity. Um, so where, when you say that, look, I am a Muslim, I am a believer in Allah, I follow the Messenger, what does it mean? What does it mean for you to be a Muslim, well, there are a set of beliefs that you must hold in your heart, yes. and, and that must be translated into your actions. Yes. Okay? So it is important because it gives the individual a sense of identity, a sense of belonging to the religion. And so what are some of the practical ways that students at Unity Grammar uh, engage in this target, or how, how is that expressed as part of their everyday life at Unity Grammar? Well, that is expressed through the Islamic, first of all, through these Islamic studies lessons that we have um, daily here at Unity Grammar, um, the sermons, um, uh, the morning assemblies, and uh, the interactions that the teachers have. As you know, that being in Islamic school, it's not only the duty of the Islamic studies teachers to pass the message to our children, our students, but it's also the duty of um, the, the, the wider um, group of teachers um, to pass the Islamic message. So in our interactions with students, um, in, the, in the key learning, learning areas, we, we um, so for example, um, it could be in, in, in science, so when uh, the students are studying about, or geography, when they're studying about landscapes and land structures, um, we mentioned to them that this is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we're bringing verses from the Quran showing, um, uh, or discussing where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the creation of the mountains. Yes. Um, so integrating um, these beliefs um, into um, the key learning areas also is uh, another way of expressing um, Islamic fundamentals into the key learning areas. And so, Sheikh, does the student experience when it comes to key target area number one, Islamic fundamentals, does it differ for junior school and senior school student experiences? Yes. 
So with junior school, obviously, um, the depth that we uh, go in, uh, uh, and and in senior school, if you look at uh, the senior school uh, Islamic um, uh, program, the depth that, uh, that is offered in senior school is different um, to that of junior school. Um, also, um, uh, with junior school, you find uh, with kindergarten uh, cater to. Um, we are uh, developing and, 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 and instilling the basics of, of, of the Islamic uh, aqidah and basics of Islamic uh, fiqh. For example, in kindergarten, um, they'll be talking uh, or they'll be learning about um, uh, Allah, who Allah is, and, um, and that, that develops all the way up to um, year one. Uh, yes. What are some of the attributes of Allah? And uh, what's, uh, you know, the, the main attribute of Allah, one of the main attributes of Allah SWT that, that is mentioned in the Quran in the beginning of every surah, is the most merciful, um, is the most compassionate. So those attributes start to uh, uh, flow in. Materialize in, in, in their mind. In their mind. In their practice. Uh, in, in year one and two. And as they um, develop into year six, we go into um, the nature of Allah um, yes. uh, in, in, in a deeper sense. And that's um, uh, not only um, Allah, but also the other five pillars of faith as well. So um, the belief in the angels are introduced as well in, a, in, in, in the later years um, in junior school. Um, and then the issue of um, uh, the, the belief in the books, the prophets, um, and uh, uh, the last day as well. So um, if you look at, for example, um, the year seven students, um, we are actually studying the hadith of Jibreel. Um, uh, when Jibreel uh, came to the Prophet and sat yes, of um, close to him and he asked him a series of questions no. about Iman, about faith and about Islam. Yes. So that flows beautifully. Uh, so the year seven students are currently um, are discussing the five pillars of Iman, uh, Islam yes. and the six pillars of Iman and I believe we have reached uh, so far up to the uh, belief in the uh, prophets. So our next stage is now um, uh, belief in the um, uh, the uh, the day of judgment and the signs of the hour. So, no. yes, so it does differ um, in, in terms of its uh, uh, complexity and, okay. and, and, and its depth. Of course, and it's all age appropriate at yes. the end of the day. Yes. That's, that's, I think, yeah. uh, something that's notable and, yeah. and important to note. Now, uh, before we come to the conclusion of this session, being the special 10 days of the Hijjah, uh, at the end of every session, uh, we'd like to remind the viewers and the listeners of one sunnah act or one good deed that they can do today as they're listening to this session or as they're watching this session. Uh, what would be your first recommendation, inshallah, for them to do? So, as you know, the sunnah of the Prophet is, is an ocean, so you can just, it's like working, walking into a, uh, a, a, a candy store and just, you know, picking out. <laughs> so, but unfortunately, um, there are many neglected. Um, sunnah, uh, sunnah acts of the Prophet Muhammad uh, So, you know, I would like to um, uh, pass on uh, to the viewers that stay tuned. We have something special um, uh, with regards to the sunnah acts. We do indeed. Just a small teaser. It's a small <laughs> teaser. Um, my sunnah act will be, um, look, um, sleeping upon wudu. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, I was just reading this hadith the other day and um, told us, uh, you know, the wudu, uh, in fact, uh, last week's khutbah, if you remember Mr. Koda, um, uh, Jazallah Khair, he gave uh, um, uh, uh, the, the khutbah about the importance of salat and the preparing for the salat itself. And he mentioned the wudu, the wudu, uh, wudu is a treasure in itself. It and subhanAllah, one of the things that we notice about wudu, that if you sleep upon wudu, meaning that um, you just go, how long does wudu take? A minute. A minute, if yes, that. Yeah, yeah. if that, a minute. So if you do wudu and you sleep upon wudu, it doesn't matter if you lose the wudu during your sleep. As you know, when you sleep, you lose wudu. As long as you make the wudu before you sleep, what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends an angel to stay next to you. And every time you move or shift or wake up, the angel makes dua. Subhan. Oh Allah, forgive Fulan because he slept upon tahar, meaning wudu. Subhan. What a beautiful act. What a beautiful act and a blessing in itself. Just one minute. And the angel stays with you for the whole night mm -hmm. till the morning making dua for you. What a blessing. But unfortunately, it's one of the neglected acts of uh, Sunan. Well, not many people know about it. So, but uh, you know, that's my 
Sunnacht. Zakallah khair for the night. Zakallah khair on Sheikh. It was an absolute pleasure. And thank you so much and the Islamic Studies team here at Unity Grammar for putting all of these fantastic sessions together and all of these great initiatives for the community to benefit from. Um, this does bring us to the end of our first session. So we farewell our viewers. Uh, we say, Nastabdaakum Allah, Ladi Latubaya Wadaah, Nastafarakallahum Wadaah, Nastafarakallahum Wadaah, Nastafarakallahum Wadaah, Nastafarakallahum Wadaah, Nastafarakallahum Wada